Hello everybody. In this exercise, we will explore the storage interface in JavaScript. You could use web storage to create shopping cart applications for online stores, allow your visitors to change your website's theme and remember their theme choice from page to page, storing certain details about a user, or hundreds of other programming tasks that might require your pages or applications to remember things about a user or for the user. It can also help you cut down on requests for database data as the user goes from page to page on your website. You can think of it as a data cache that has a five megabyte storage limit. Now here are the properties and methods that you'll be learning about in this video, and they're the nuts and bolts of the storage interface. And as we already mentioned, there's an arbitrary space limit suggested for stored data in various browser software, which is five megabytes. And the security concerns would be similar to any security concerns that you would have with creating sessions or cookies in PHP, Java, C, or any other language that allows the programmer to create and manage sessions and cookies. We're going to be working with two HTML files so we can show how we can set stored data in any file on our website and then the other files on our website will be able to access all that data. So that's why we're going to be working with two files. And the first thing we want to do is illustrate the difference between local storage and session storage. So first I'm going to create a local storage item. Now we're going to put a session storage item in place into temporary memory. And the items in storage work like key value pairs. So you have the key is on the left, then you put a comma, and then the value is on the right. So in this case, the name of my keys is name, or you can change that to username if it makes more sense. That way we don't get confused. So the key name is username, and the value is George. That's for a local storage item. This session storage item has a key name of username and a value of Bradley. Now we established both of them so we can show you how local storage has a longer life than session storage. Session storage has a shorter term memory according to when the user leaves your website or shuts their browser down, while local storage remains persistent even if they shut their browser down. The last thing we need now is just a simple link that goes to otherpage.html. That way when we navigate to this page, there's going to be a local storage item and a session storage item created, and then we'll have a link that we can click to go to the other page. Now in otherpage.html, we're going to apply the following code. Now all this code is doing is writing to the document inside of the body element. We're writing hi local storage dot username and hi session storage dot username. So we should get hi George and hi Bradley. Now the only reason this other page dot HTML will, would have access to this information is because we already set it in one of the other pages on our website, some page dot HTML. So now let's just run some page dot HTML in our favorite browser software or navigate to it. So now the two storage items were set and I have the link to go to the other page. Let's click that. See how he said it says hi George and hi Bradley. That means all of the information is remembered now for all the different pages on our website. Now I wanted to illustrate the difference and put both side by side by let's take this link right here and let's open a new tab. Let's go to that new tab and the same link. See? Hi George and hi undefined. The reason why this is undefined is because we're using a session storage item for this one. We're using local storage item for this one. That's why this one persists and this one did not because it's, it's still available in this tab. We can refresh and it will be available all day in this tab, but it's not available in this tab. Now let's just shut the browser down and come back to otherpage.html. Let's reopen the browser. Then let's go to that same link. See? George is still there. Even after we shut the browser down, the local storage item is still there, but the session storage item is not there anymore. So if you want to think of it in terms of cookies and sessions, this is a cookie and this is a session, which is a shorter lived memory and it only can persist within the, the browsing tab that it was set in. Local storage will persist through other tabs and even if the user shuts the browser down. Now all of the methods and properties like the method setItem 
that can be used on both local storage and session storage. So all of the different methods and properties that we're going to be discussing for the rest of the video apply to both of these storage objects. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to work with the session storage examples because they're just like the local storage examples. But now you know the difference between local storage and session storage. So from here on in, we're going to just work with the local storage. Now, whenever we want to clear data out of the memory, the local storage memory, we can just type in, let me just comment this line out. We run the local storage dot clear method. So now if I run this in my favorite browser, it should have cleared the storage. Now I'm going to go to the other page and I have undefined data on under other page. Actually, let me go to other page and remove this one to show you how we have cleared it now. We have successfully cleared that local storage data. And you can remove just specific items. Let's go ahead and set another item. So we have username George and we'll say country will be the key name for the next item and that will be USA. So we have username George, country is USA. And we'll go into other page and we'll copy this reference and we'll type from quote plus 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 quote and then in between there we'll put in that data. So it'll say hi whatever the username is from country. So we can access local storage dot username and local storage dot country data. And in this document, I'm going to clear the local storage every time. Before these new storage items are put into there, I'm going to clear out the local storage, which is not something you have to do, but it's just something I want to do. That way it's empty each time we set it new. So I'll go to this document in my favorite browser. Now I'll go to the other page. Now I see hi George from USA. That means this data, both of these data items, are stored in local storage for all of the other pages on my website to access whenever they need to access them in script or in the HTML. Now we'll show you how to access the length property. So we'll go back here and we'll set one more piece of data. Let's just put color blue. Now when this script runs, there'll be three local storage items set. So in any other page in the website, let's go ahead and get rid of this. We can and we'll write to the document the length. Or you can console.log this or alert it, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to write it to the document just for testing purposes. So we're going to check the local storage.length and we should get three because we're setting three items into local storage. So let's go check in our favorite browser. Go to other page and we get a big fat three. Now what does that mean? That means you can loop over the local storage in a for loop to access all of the items within it even if you don't know what those items are prior to running the loop. You can access all the items within a local storage object just by running a loop over it. And once you get comfortable with the the other methods that we're going to demonstrate, it'll be simple for you to do that. Here, let's go to, let's grab this. Let's put it in this other document right here. And you'll see that the it should be either undefined or zero because we cleared out the local storage so we won't get a length. Let's see if that works. Yeah, we get a zero because there is no items in the local storage because we went ahead and cleared them in this document. Now when these things get put into the local storage object as a list of items, they're going to be alphabetical, meaning that this one should be the first item which will have an index of zero. This one will be the second item having an index of one. And this will be the third item having an index of two in the list. And I think they, they are ordered automatically in the local storage object according to their place in the alphabet. So this one looks like it will be first in the list, this one second, and this one third. So now I'll show you what the key method does. In other page.html, or you can do it in some page.html, whatever you want, you can access the local storage object and run the key method on it. And we're going to get the, what the key method does is returns to you the name of the key for that item. It doesn't give you the value for that item. It gives you the name of the key. It returns the name of the key. 
So in this case, we should get color. So let's go ahead and run some page in our favorite browser. And we go to other page and we see the key name of color. Now, if we change this to a one, we should see the key name of country. So if we go back to that page and refresh, see the key name of country is written. And if we make this a two, we'll see the key name of username when we refresh this page. So that's all the key method does is it returns the name, the name part of the key and not its value. Now we'll show you how to use the get item method. So for the local storage object, you can run the get item method and you just put the name of the key that you want to get the value for. So get item returns the actual value for whatever key name that you put here. So we should get George written. So let's run some page, go to other page, and we see George is written. And you can also actually use that in conjunction if you ever need to use that in conjunction with the key method. So we'll type in local storage dot key and we'll target whatever element in the list that we want. So if I want to target the first element, since they're ordered alphabetically, I'll target color first and that will be a zero. So I'll put a zero here and this will actually give me the value of the, the, uh, the key of color. So it'll give me blue now that I'm using these methods in conjunction with one another and go to the page and refresh and I get blue. It's because I used the name of the key here and I'm using get item method. So that's a way you can do things more dynamically inside of your loops if you ever need to. Okay, now I have my other page.html set up like this to just render the username and the country from the local storage. So if we take a look at how that works, we go to other page and we get George USA. That's great. Now let's say we want to destroy just one of the items in local storage. I'm going to set out to destroy this country item that's in local storage. So for that, I'm going to use the remove item method. So I'll just go here into my script and before these things get written to the page, I'm going to type in local storage dot remove item, open close parentheses. And I want to use, I want to destroy or remove the country item from the local storage list. Now when this script runs, the local storage country item is going to be removed. So we should only have access to one of those items. Now let's go ahead and refresh or navigate and we get George is still in place, but we get a null returned for the country. And let's also go ahead and output the length. So let's just type in the length property here and refresh. And you see, we only have two items in storage in local storage because the country was removed, the country item. So you see, we established three items and then we were able to destroy or remove just one of those items in the list using the remove item method. And that's all of the properties and methods that are involved with the local storage and session storage objects. So you'll be working with local storage when you want things to be remembered longer or more persistently, like when the user closes their browser down or in other tabs on your website. And then you use session storage when you want it to be a more short lived memory for just one browsing session. And then when the user shuts their browser down, the session storage is automatically destroyed. And also session, session storage data cannot be accessed in multiple browsing tabs. Now there's a good chance in the future that we'll be making tutorials that apply web storage to them. And now we won't have to go so far in depth to make sure everybody understands web storage when we do apply a few lines of code for it in our future tutorials. Whenever you guys see local storage dot whatever or session storage storage dot whatever, you'll understand that we're working with storage interface in JavaScript and you'll know all of the properties and methods that you can apply to that kind of code. Okie dokie, cracky smokey. Bye bye.